This video is brought to you by NCIX.com. Great technology, selection and service. Hello everyone, I'm Dmitry with Hardware Canucks and recently we published a workstation upgrade video that you can check out in the description or in the eye where I like the Lian Lee PC08 case so much that I decided to put my own uh, editing system into it and see how it handles the assembly process, the usual little details that can only be found when working uh, fully with the case. Knowing Lian and Lee and how premium their product is, the PC08 is a no exception with a strong aluminum frame that feels incredibly light and that's awesome. Plus the tempered glass panels is that final touch to make the build more of an art piece than an editing machine. Priced around $400 though, it is a showpiece with the entire front and left side totally exposed to reveal whatever hardware that you put inside. The mounting method for these side panels could be better though. There are no rubber dampers on any of the four mounting points and the tiny lip below the panel is what's holding it in place, which means you have to be super careful when putting the panels back on. Uh, and like with any glass, handling marks are a pain and make sure to not touch the inside of the panel as those fingerprints are not fun to clean out. Size-wise, it's shorter in height and length compared to uh, my Entolux full tower, but is wider due to this dual chamber design. Now the front intake is a bit strange because uh, there's a piece of glass there. So the intake ports are actually on the right side running down the panel, which actually creates really cool illuminated pattern if you install the lighting. These three 120 mm fans deliver air only to the rear chamber and thus your main components receive zero airflow. And that is actually by design to encourage installation of a radiator in the rear chamber. And we'll talk more about water cooling later on. I'm not sure why Lee and Lee left these massive white stickers on the fans uh, that doesn't totally benefit the front face of the case. Now, one of the coolest features on this enclosure is built-in lighting hub with rotating knobs to adjust the hue. I don't particularly like the location of these knobs as it's not that easy to reach back here, but once you find your desired color, you can set it and forget it. At the top, we find four USB 3 ports, audio jacks and the power button surrounded by beautiful brushed aluminum and the power plus hard drive activity LEDs are located inside, which is fine, but in my opinion, the LEDs are a little bit too large. At the top, we have dual 120mm fan ports, uh, which I highly recommend you utilize, but a cover plate is available if you don't want to use uh, any top fans. Removing the large aluminum cover grants you access to a dust filter, which is awesome, plus the side dust filter, which is very important, as your main chamber will most likely have all fans set up as exhaust, creating negative air pressure and attracting dust. That will not be fun to clean with all this glass. Taking a look at the back, you can see the chamber separation with eight PCI slots, rear 120mm exhaust fan, which is included with a guard mesh and with only a single spot for mounting, so you cannot move the fan up and down, just in case you have a thick radiator installed at the top. And that is unfortunate, because in this build where I mount a 120mm rad at the back and a 240 for the top, it initially did not fit as there's no clearance. The 120mm rad was only secured by a single screw on the fan grill and I think sliding strips would make more sense for the rear fan. And also the top dual fan bracket is removable for the fans or the radiator mounting outside of the case, but it is held in with seven tiny screws, which made mounting the bracket back in place really inconvenient. For the main chamber, hardware installation is straightforward and here's the end result after spending some time trying to find room for that uh, rear radiator for the GPU. But in terms of cable management, PC08 is equipped well to pass cables from the rear chamber into the main one with appropriately placed rubber grommets to clean everything up inside. For the rear chamber, this is where all the drives, the power supply and cable mess will be. Power supply is mounted on the side, which when removed reveals the lighting hub, which you have to pre-route and connect all the cables before mounting the power supply, as being on the other side of the power supply 
well, it's not accessible at all. It should have been relocated to a more open spot that would not require power supply removal if you need to get access to those connections. The hard drive cage here has two more 120 millimeter fans totaling the rear chamber cooling to five fans and none for the main chamber. The drive cage supports only two SSDs mounted on top and the bottom of the cage and up to six three and a half inch drives via two screws on each side. If only we had a toolless mechanism as replacing any of these drives means taking out the entire cage, disconnecting everything, which I actually had to do when filming this build log and it's just such a time waste. I would prefer individual drive caddies. For cable management in this chamber, it's really up to you if you want to clean everything up. I'd suggest you do so because it's difficult to tell what is what and what is running where, especially if you'll be using the space for a custom loop. So it has to stay organized. For lighting inside, I've mounted two adhesive LED strips that are included and a total of four strips are included on each front column that illuminates the fans a little bit and also the main hardware. And I think this is one of the most beautiful cases that I've worked with, especially when those side glass panels are on to create this really stunning looking effect. Now, if you want to do a custom loop, one of the top cutouts is open, meaning you can pass tubing through the main chamber to the back. And I've gone ahead and rerouted my 240 millimeter radiator to the rear chamber, installed it in the bottom two slots, because to my surprise, uh, because of all the IO cables, I couldn't fit the radiator to the top fan mount. So this means if you're serious about creating a custom water cooling system inside the PC08, it will be challenging unless you mod or make more cutouts where needed. This does clear out the top fan slots, perhaps for intake, and would make cable routing easier. But I wasn't expecting all the little hiccups along the way. A case that looks this good and costs this much should not cause frustration, especially when assembling a very common system with an all-in-one cooler. So the Lian Li PC08 is a pretty sight, probably the best looking enclosure for this year, but there are definitely questionable design choices regarding cooling, the lack of user-friendly water cooling and drive installation, and I would love to see for Lian Li to implement flexible mounting rails for all fans so users can adjust the exact position of each fan based on all other factors, in particular for that rear fan and if a uh, top radiator is installed. But the end result is absolutely gorgeous and the best part about this case is it has so much potential. In the right hands this can be made to be the perfect showcase water cooling system without a doubt. So guys, this concludes this review of the Lian Li PC08. Let us know what you change with this cube case and make sure to check out our workstation upgrade video featuring the PC08. As always, don't forget to subscribe for more similar content. I'm Dmitry with Hardware Canucks. We'll see you in the next one.